let's play a game. That's right, a game. The rules, simple enough. I'm going to present you and a random number generator with a hypothetical situation and two choices. If the random number number generator goes with one, we go with the first choice. And if it goes with two, we go with the second. Okay, ready? Let's begin. So hypothetically, you're taking a walk and it's been great so far. I mean, the sun is shining, birds are chirping and the wind is breezing, but at just the right amount. When all of a sudden you hear a dog barking, you get closer and closer to the noise and you see the dog. It's really, really adorable, but also really, really terrifying. But here's the thing. The dog has a collar, but no owner in sight. Do you one, help the dog, or two, leave to avoid the consequences? Okay, ready? Looks like the answer is two. We leave to avoid the consequences. Oh, and look, we made the right choice. Because as we begin leaving, the dog stops barking. But then the dog starts following us instead, and then becomes bigger and bigger, and then turns into a, fa a fairy godmother? I'll take it. <laughs> the fairy godmother then presents us with another set of two choices. One, a brand new desk, or two, a brand new pencil. Okay, ready? Looks like the answer is one, a brand new desk. We learned two things from this. First, that sometimes not helping dogs can make them become fairy godmothers who give us brand new desks. <laughs> And two, that this game that we just played actually applies to life. See, when we played this game, your brain immediately came to making a decision, whether that be helping the dog or not helping the dog. And we make decisions like this every single day. For example, we decide what time we're gonna wake up or what time we brush our teeth or how we eat our breakfast. Cereals before milk or milk before cereals. That's a decision we make. But sometimes these decisions become a lot harder to make. For example, when we have to ask ourselves doing homework or answering those text messages, it's difficult. So the question is, if we know what decisions to make, we know which ones are good for us, why don't we actually make them? It'd be a lie to say that this question came out of the blue for me. In fact, last year during COVID, while I was stuck at home, I was also stuck in myself. I would see these people around me getting that internship they wanted or the job they wanted to get or getting good grades. And I stood there unable to do anything about myself, but simply compare. For example, one time I wanted to meditate and so I did. I spent five minutes that morning and meditated, and it was great. I felt tranquil, at peace with the world. And then I decided to continue meditating five minutes every day for the next couple of days. And it worked out for the first few couple of days, because one day I went, what if I meditate five minutes just in the afternoon? To me, it was still five minutes of meditation, right? But then that five, soon turned to four, which turned to two, and eventually I stopped meditation altogether. I wasn't sure what had happened. I mean, I knew what I wanted to do. I'd established my goal, but when it actually came to making a decision, I reverted back to my old self. And every single change I tried to make would always happen like this. I would also always go back to doing what I would always do. I was stuck. But then I remembered something. How many of you know what reading time is? <laughs> As expected, it's quite a lot. Now for me, reading time looked like coming home from recess, tired and smelly and sweaty, and my parents would make me read a book just for 15 minutes. And one of these books in particular struck me. Here's another question. How many of you know what a choose your own adventure book is. Anyone? As expected, it's not a lot. So let me give you a brief history lesson. A choose your own adventure book was made by a man named Ed. Now Ed 
would read his daughters a bedtime story every night. One day he realized maybe he could make his own bedtime story. The Adventures of Pete, he called it. And so as he was telling his daughters this wonderful story, he realized he was out of ideas. So rather than him making one up, he asked his daughters, what should Pete do? And his daughters responded. But here's the catch. Both his daughters had two different ideas. And these two different ideas would lead to different ideas, which would lead to two very different endings. It set off a chain reaction. I remembered this as I was thinking back to meditation that day. And that's what I did. I made my life a choose your own adventure game. I took a notebook paper and I opened it up. I saw two pages. On the left, I wrote down everything holding me back. My lack of discipline, my sorrow, my regret, my anger, my lack of motivation, my tiredness, everything, everything. And on the right, I wrote down in bold, clear writing exactly what I wanted to do, meditate. And then I thought about it. I thought about how different decisions could lead to a different ending, much like Ed thought of when he asked his two daughters, what should Pete do? But there was one other thing I did. I've recently been reading Mel Robbins' Five Second Rule book. And Mel Robbins explains that sometimes when you're making a decision, it's hard. So do this instead. Think of the decision you want to make for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Always count down and then do it. That's exactly what I did. I took my book, I'd written all of these things down, and I simply looked at it. I counted down five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and I flipped that page. And as soon as I flip, flipped that page, there I was on a blank page, ready to make a new decision, ready to come to a different ending of my life. But this isn't just something on paper, <laughs> quite literally. You can do this too. In fact, right now, mentally take two pieces of paper and write down what you really wanna do. On the right, with bold, clear writing. Maybe it's that new job or that new promotion. Maybe it's finally talking at school. And then on the left, write down everything holding you back. Your tiredness, your shyness, you're not able to speak up. Write all of it down and then count down. Five, four, three, two, one, and flip that page. And just like that, there you are on a brand new page. Because that's the only way you can get better, actually starting. And congratulations. You just did two wonderful things. First, you were able to become aware of your habits. Think of a habit like the invisible architecture that builds up your life. When you're not aware of what you're doing, you immediately revert back to a habit. For example, there's nothing wrong with hitting snooze on the snooze button, but do it a bunch of times and soon you'll realize that every time you wake up, you immediately hit snooze. You create a habit. But secondly, you were actually able to break that habit. And this is so important because now you're able to take that architecture and build it up yourself. And sometimes for me, you'll find me meditating in the randomest of places, all because I used this. I thought of my world like a choose your own adventure game. <laughs> but the last thing I want you to do is take this book and close it. And when you do, you'll notice two beautiful words written across it. It's by you. Because this is your book. This is the book of all the decisions you can make and you have the ability to make them. Remember that desk from before that the fairy godmother gave you? Well, on the desk is a pencil. 
And just like you can write every decision you make, you can also erase it. So what does this mean? Well, next time you're faced with making a decision, erase things that are holding you back. For example, if you really want to do your homework, but your phone's calling to you, erase that phone, put your phone somewhere else. Or when you're working and sleep is really telling you to go sleep, erase that bed, go work somewhere else. By minimizing or erasing distractions, you're able to make it easier to make decisions. So one day, maybe you'll close a chapter of your life. And when you close it, you'll see five beautiful words written across it. Five, you, four, lived, three, happily, two, ever, one, after. Flip. Hey, and congratulations on that brand new desk. And may you always succeed at this game of life.